system in the history of human existence. Nothing on the face of the earth can even come close to compare it. The ship, a long cigar-shaped craft, is almost 3,000 feet in length, about the length of three aircraft carriers. It flies by a virtue of a gravity manipulation system, allowing it to operate at any altitude, even into space, and return without need of jet engines, propellers, massive fuel tanks, or rocket engines. All this is achieved by the manipulation of Earth's gravity, which for all intents and purposes affords unlimited motion possibilities. Since the craft manipulated gravity, there are zero gravitational effects upon the crew or systems inside the craft. Instead of the craft moving despite gravity, gravity itself moves with the craft. This means the craft can maneuver at previously impossible speeds and angles without the crew suffering any g-forces. While its maximum speed is classified, TRN can report the sky dreadnought can easily travel in excess of 10,000 miles per hour inside Earth's atmosphere, or stop and hover, all of it totally silent. Not only can it achieve these amazing speeds, it can do so almost instantaneously making the craft totally untouchable by any weapon system on it. It cannot be tracked by infrared or heat-seeking weapons. These nanites are not only part of the anti-radar features of the craft, they are also part of the defensive light-bending visual study. It cannot be tracked by infrared or heat-seeking weapons. These nanites are not only part of the anti-radar features of the craft, they are also part of the defensive light-bending visual study communications and weapons systems. For communications, other nation nanites direct all electromagnetic emissions to the sky, making it impossible for ground or air-based radio tracking or communication interception. As to weaponry, the Sky Dreadnought does not use any conventional weapons. All of its weapons are a type of pulse plasma beams, which when seen by the naked eye, appear to be bluish-white, focusing bolts of lightning. The weapons were first used on an experimental basis in the Second Iraqi War, where prototypes were tank mounted and were seen melting cars, trucks and buses, to the shock and horror of the Iraqi troops who witnessed them. The weapons operate 360 degrees vertically and 360 degrees horizontally, without any blind spots. Nothing can escape the craft's weapons, and no man-made object on Earth can withstand being hit by the beam. Metals turn molten and melt in seconds. Concrete is reduced to powder instantly. Human bodies shrivel to burned, melted hulks, the size of infants, in less than one second. If attacked, the system on board the craft can engage a staggering number of threats simultaneously. Literally thousands of attacking targets can be wiped out of existence before they even get close to the ground, while the range of its plasma weapons is classified. TRN can report the craft has the ability to attack any target from horizon to horizon, no matter the altitude of the craft. Given this ability, there isn't a weapon on Earth that can be launched or, or used against the dreadnought without the attack being
site on World Trade Center 2, what has been described as a ball comes into the shop on a seemingly straight path. This ball is not commented on by any of the presenters and has never been discussed on Main Street. In NBC's live footage, the feed switches to a different camera about four seconds before the second impact. No plane is seen in any of NBC's live images. In this lower quality VCR recorded version, the camera does not switch so we can see the resulting explosion. If we consider the path of the ball, it appears to be what causes the impact on World Trade Center 2. Both its trajectory and its speed show that it would have been at the point of impact at the time the impact occurred. So we have just seen the footage which NBC broadcast live. Now let's compare that to what NBC showed on their evening news. <laughs>